This is Martin Giles of the Guildford Dragon News, and today I'm with Bill Stoko of the Guildford Vision Group, otherwise known as GVG. Bill, thank you for giving us your time today. You're, now, you're the new chairman of the Guildford Vision Group. Um, what is the aim of the group? Well, the group was formed about seven, eight years ago now, uh, specifically to um, lobby for a master plan for the town centre. A number of us had got together and decided that something must be done. There were areas of the town centre that were uh, less than stellar and we thought that um, um, it should be, there should be a, a, a determined programme of regeneration. And what uh, change of direction, if any, are you going to introduce as, a, as the new chairman? Well, I think uh, our, 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 our general direction will continue. Uh, recently the council passed a motion where it undertook to um, establish a master plan for the town centre. That was quite a moment um, the other day, the other evening at the council meeting. Um, so we will continue. We, you know, we will continue with the task of seeing that through. Okay. Now, in the past, that some of the relations between the council um, and the group have been difficult, uh, according to the previous chairman John Rigg. Um, do you see that as being all in the past now? Or, or? Well, I certainly hope so, um, because, yes, relations were difficult, um, uh, but we continued nonetheless to make the case for a town centre master plan and achieved a lot of public support uh, in, in, in that pursuit. And I think it's been said that the group is apolitical. Yes. Um, I mean, I stood as a Tory candidate in one of the town centre wards, Four colleagues, GVG colleagues, stood as um, candidates for residents, uh, the Renew Residents Group, uh, and another of our members is the very active Lib Dem. So, yes, we are a broad church. And did you find uh, within the Conservative uh, group that there was a lot of uh, much sympathy for your aims? Oh, I believe so. Yes, um, that, that uh, people being very encouraging. Okay. Um, so now you have, uh, it seems, an improved relationship with the council. Um, how do you see that relationship developing? Well, it's early days yet. Um, we had, as I mentioned before, the motion passed the other evening in full council. Uh, I would like to see a follow through to that where GVG and other stakeholder groups were involved in uh, establishing the brief for that uh, master plan study where they the motion also called for a professional master plan consultancy to be involved. And have you had any indications that they will be uh, involving you more closely with the development of a plan? Well, there's not probably not been an occasion to, to, to demonstrate that. I mean, I've had conversations with uh, senior figures which have been encouraging, so um, watch this space. OK. Now, the plan that you produced uh, a little while ago now, um, it was quite detailed. Uh, and a lot, I think, it, uh, well, according to your press releases, uh, you were encouraged by the support you received. Um, how achievable do you think that plan is, given the different ownerships of the land involved in the town? Well, one of the, one of the great strengths we thought of our plan is there are very few ownerships involved. A lot of it is owned by the council, where, where we wanted to see specific um, elements of regeneration. A lot of it is council owned or council controlled uh, and otherwise it's in the hands of two or three um, professional institutional investors. So um, that's encouraging I think. But again our plan was, was a suggestion. We're not pursuing our plan come hell or high water but we're saying this is the sort of thing that you can see coming from a professionally produced master plan. Okay, but one of the main features of the plan was to introduce a new bridge to help take away the traffic from the area between the police station and the bottom of North Street. How essential is that to a new plan, in your view? Uh, well, the goal is to, pedest to pedestrianise more of the town centre, particularly around the riverside, where by the George Abbott car park, for instance, why that should be a car park right alongside a riverside setting, um, I'm not, I, I, I can't understand. Yes, these things are historical in that 
um, in back in the 50s, 60s, provision was made for the car. I think times have moved on now and we're trying to see how a place can be more people centric and that means somehow pushing the traffic away. And one of our suggestions was a new east-west crossing. Uh, that's also important because the Farnham Road Bridge, the only town centre east-west crossing, is crumbling. It's un going to undergo some strengthening and renovation, but it is a clapped out bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and so if that for some reason failed or, or, or struggled, then Guildford would really be uh, in a, an unhappy place mm -hmm. with, with um, no alternative. But you're, you're not fixed on a particular site for the bridge. Well, we've been uh, snookered, if you like, by the Solom development, because in our plan, um, the crossing went, went through an area which is now part of the Solom development. We would like to see some um, uh, movement on Solom's part. There's, there's a number of aspects of that development that are, uh, I think, are... Uh, um, are unfortunate, but they do have the formal planning permission now. Okay, but there are, uh, given your overall aim of freeing up that area of the town, there are only so many options, I, I presume. Yes, uh, I mean, we've we, in our group, we've got some avid tunnellers. Right. <laughs> uh, Wouldn't that be a better idea? I think, uh, I, we, uh, we haven't done a detailed examination of all the options. In fact, our, our next meeting is to do just that, or to begin that process of seeing post Solum, you know, what are the options are open to us. Uh, but again, the aim is not to create more tarmac, it is to somehow push traffic away from the town centre, accepting the, 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 the you know, being pragmatic, accepting the, the, the uh, the situation that we're, we do have at the moment with the gyratory, but seeing somehow if we can so amend traffic flows that it frees up a much wider area for pedestrian space, for market square, public realm, and so on. Okay, and I, what about your views on style of architecture? Are you agnostic on that, or how would you do it? Personally, that? I'm agnostic right. around the table. Uh, three or four or more architects, so you can imagine our conversations get quite exciting at times. So would you consult the public on their view? I think the public should be consulted. I would hope that the master plan exercise now hopefully underway, or soon to be underway, in the council will produce options. Okay. So people can see two or three options and, and make their views known. And finally, this meeting you mentioned, can anyone go to it? Sure. Um, we accept that it's our regular meeting place, so space is limited, but we open, particularly we invite councillors to come along. Um, but yes, people do turn up from time to time. We meet regularly on a Friday. And um, uh, yeah. Okay, so will you be putting a notice in the Girl for Dragon so that we can uh, tell the people? Oh, it it, well, it's, it's our, the meeting of our internal steering group. It's not a public meeting okay. per se. So, uh, you know, 400 people turned up we'd be embarrassed right <laughs> so it's not actually a public meeting it's not a public meeting no it's it's it, it uh, gvg operates with a uh, a steering group of a dozen to 16 people and uh, that's the group that meets regularly and when we have something uh, significant to say or to or want to hear from the public then we have our big public meetings as you as you know from previous reports so some people have criticized the group because you're not elected and um, therefore they say, why should you have any special privilege or access rights to elected councillors? Uh, we shouldn't have any special access rights, but we are an organised group of residents who um, were concerned eight years ago about the state of the town centre. I, for instance, had just finished a spell as chairman of Abbott's Hospital, and from the top of the Abbott's turrets, you can look down the delightful scene of the high street rising up to the mount, and yet turn around and look towards North Street, and it's a pretty depressing townscape. Um, so we, I say we're organised to the extent that uh, we came together as a group of residents with particular expertise, um, architects, town planners, um, people with uh, strategic development experience, um, property economics, 
traffic and infrastructure uh, expertise. So it's a pretty, um, pretty uh, well, uh, well experienced group. Okay, and and um, you mentioned this uh, meeting that you're going to hold. Is it a public meeting? And no, no, it's not a public meeting. It's just we meet regularly on a Friday and have done so for the last eight years. It's just that uh, this week I hope we can sit down and have a look at what alternatives might be to achieving our aim of wider pedestrianisation now that the Solum scheme, um, well, it hasn't snookered, but it's made... Our, our idea of a crossing uh, that more difficult, that much more difficult to achieve. Okay, and um, presumably there may be a press release or something to report what you decide. I don't think we will come to a conclusion in just one meeting, but it'll it, hopefully it will set us down a, 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 a path of exploration. If something concrete comes from it, yes, we'll almost certainly announce it. Bill Stoker, thank you very much. Thank you.